Hey guys and gals, Weekend Modder here. Wanted to run through a update video um, so that I can share this with my customers in particular on how you can perform a dashboard update on your Xbox 360. Now, uh, the page that you'll notice that I'm on is the 17150 XE build uh, release for um, XE build, which was put out by Drosum20. Uh, I followed him fairly recently and he seems to be a pretty helpful guy and this particular build I can personally attest um, is valid and also has dash launch functional in it with either the third versions 3.12 or 3.13. So step one, download the latest XE build. You can do that right here um, at this mega link. I'll include this in the item dis or the YouTube video description so that you can grab your own copy of it. Once you have a copy of it, if you've purchased your console from me, and that's the primary target audience of this, um, you will have a disk that contains backup files on it. Inside those backup files with each of those um, will contain a UPD flash.bin inside that folder that has your serial number on it. So just to give you an idea of what I'm referring to here, um, let me just navigate to uh, let's see. So this is the contents of what it would look like for each of you that get a console from me. On that CD, there'll be a, a folder named after your serial number of your console, and inside that are going to be all these files. CPU keys, obviously your CPU key, your NAND dumps, these are the original retail dumps of your NAND and then your UPD flash that bin, which is going to be what's currently flashed to your console, unless you've already updated it from what I provided. So with that in mind, with uh, XE build started up here, all we need to do is load up our source file and load our UPD flash that bin. The output file you want to pay attention to, if you're loading the source file from the CD, if it's not on your hard drive, if you haven't copied it over, if it's like on your D or E drive, whatever, you're going to want to change this output path to like your desktop or something. You do it by clicking the save button and then you can just click desktop and hit save. And the reason is because you can't write back to the CDs that I provide you. They're already closed as far as the track goes. So um, you, you couldn't write an updated file there. Build type for almost everybody is going to be RGH 2.0. Uh, if you have an RGH 1, if you have a JTAG, you should know. Um, so you would select the appropriate build type and then also the appropriate motherboard type. In most cases, XE build properly detects this and automatically selects what you need. CPU key can be manually typed in, it can be copied and pasted. Or, again, if you hit that Git CPU key button, we can go into, in my case, uh, the CPU key folder or the file that that we also saw that was in here. So I just selected the uh, let me find it. I, all I did was select the CPU key dot text, which this is all it is. It's just a text document with your CPU key in it. So now we've got our original NAND or our original modded NAND, our UPD flash. We've got it set to output to our desktop. We've got Freeboot uh, 2.0 as a Corona set. We've got the CPU key populated. Uh, and if we have a 16 megabyte NAND or a standard NAND console, whether it's a Jasper or whatever, um, we're good to go. We can actually click generate hack damage. I'm going to create a separate video, which I'll link to now at this segment in the video, uh, with a separate special set of instructions for some different steps you need to take if you have a Corona 4 gig NAND. So we're going to proceed with this just like you don't have a Corona 4 gig. So we'll click Generate Hacked Image. On the right hand side, the log will process through here. I always click Cancel so that I can review the log personally. I want to make sure that we see the console type, the NAND size that we expect, the glitch build, V2, meaning RGH2, um, and that we see the appropriate CPU key and DVD key type information. Uh, as you might have noticed here also, um, if we go to my desktop file, there outputted was a UPD flash.bin file. So from this point, uh, what we can do is actually copy this file onto the root of a flash drive 
formatted in FAT32. So I'm going to go ahead and plug a 4 gig flash drive into my computer. And what you're going to see here, so there's my removable disk. Um, what I want to do first is on this removable disk that you see, I'm going to right click and go to properties and just make sure that it's formatted as FAT32. If it is NTFS or otherwise formatted, we would right click, go to format, and just make sure that FAT32 is selected and then reformat it. But since we are already on um, uh, FAT32, we're good to go. So I'm going to uh, once again go to my desktop. I'm going to snag that UPD flash file. So I'm going to go copy and then I'm going to paste it onto the root of the hard drive. So there we go. And then just to be certain we don't have any data corruption when we disconnect it, rather than just unplugging the drive, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to hit eject. And that's just going to make sure that the, the USB safely disconnects from the PC. So now we've done everything um, computer side that we need to do to create the updated image. Uh, I'm going to switch over to uh, the Xbox and we'll talk you through the actual uh, updating of the NAND. All right, guys and gals, here I am at the console with my 4 gig USB that we've just loaded that UPD flash dot bin to. Uh, at this point, we're just simply going to insert it into the console and boot the console using the eject button, which is going to cause it to boot into Zell. So simply going to press eject there and then wait for a good boot. So there's our successful boot. And then there's Zell on screen. Now from here, it's just a little bit of a waiting game. The requesting DHCP, it's looking for a network connection if it's connected via Ethernet. Um, it'll grab an IP address so that you could nab the CPU key if you needed it. The rest of this it'll scroll through pretty quickly and then it'll begin doing a search on attached devices for files that it knows how to run. So as you can see it just found the UPD flash.bin and it says press power now if you don't want to flash the NAND. So if you were messed up at this point and you just realized it, um, you know, press the power button and it'll stop. We don't want to stop, we do want to so we just let it run. Now it is flashing the NAND. We're actively rewriting the NAND right now as I speak. Um, and it'll run through that until it hits 3FF, which is the entire length of a 16 megabyte NAND. So we basically just let it finish up here. All right, so image written, shut down now. That's our instruction that we can actually turn off the console safely. So what we want to do at this point is come over to the console. Is come over to the console and actually, so there's our image shut down. We're actually just going to power off. And then what I like to do is just disconnect the power, count to five, whatever, three, it doesn't have to be long, and then reconnect the power. We can take out our flash drive now. Be sure to delete that file off of here so you don't accidentally reflash later on. And now when we boot with the power button, as per normal, there we got a successful boot. And if everything worked right, there we got Xbox on screen.